Hello friends and welcome back to Rachel's Baking Corner. Today we will be doing some serious baking and by serious I mean bread. That's right, bread. Um, I am pumped because I have done this recipe before so I know I'm capable. Um, not this specific recipe but this style of bread um, and I have some really exciting ingredients that I didn't use last time so just, I can already taste it. My mouth is watering. Ugh, let's just get going on this. This is going to be a Dutch oven bread. I don't know if you call it uh, French style or if it's considered a bread bowl, that B-O-U-L-E. Um, maybe we can put a picture right here to kind of show you. You'll see regardless. Um, this is gonna be round, big, puffy, crisp, flaky crust on the outside, bubbly, airy crumb on the inside, and it's going to be aromatic with garlic, rosemary, and sea salt. <sighs> I mean, need I see more? Like, no, I don't need to say any more. I love, love, love baking bread. I have always kind of prided myself in my ability to kind of adapt with these recipes, but I had tried a bread bowl before, prior to getting a Dutch oven, and it was a huge fail. And I was very depressed and wondered what I did wrong. And then I learned that the key ingredient, AKA tool, is a Dutch oven. So once I got my Dutch oven, I made it again, and it was fantastic. My whole life changed. So I'm ready to share this wonderful recipe with you and I hope you really enjoy it. So we'll talk what a Dutch oven is, ingredients, order of operations, and we'll get going. All right? All right. <laughs> Let's chat Dutch oven. This is a cast iron enamel lined Dutch oven. I think that's how it's called. It's cast iron, so it's hefty, very hefty. What it does is this, you preheat in the oven at like 400 million degrees and get it nice and roaring hot. You place your ready prepared dough into the Dutch oven, put the lid on it, and then put it in the oven. And what this does is it traps the steam as it's coming out of the loaf and just annihilates the outside of the bread and causes it to have this beautiful crisp crust that you traditionally see in a beautiful loaf of bread. Not like a sandwich bread, but like a bowl. Think like a bread bowl, a baguette, a French bread, that crispy, delicious crust. Um, you can get these kind of anywhere. I got really lucky. I went to Kohl's one day, literally looking for soap dispensers for my bathroom. Uh, I didn't find any soap dispensers I liked, but I did find this on clearance. Originally, like, a lot of money. I don't remember how much. And I think I paid $31 for it. <laughs> you, that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's an investment. It definitely can average like $50 to $100, depending on what brand you get. This is called Tramontina. <laughs> I don't know. I love the color and I like the price, so I bought it. Um, so that's enough of that. You will need your mixing machine or some guns, okay? Because you're kneading dough and it takes a little bit of work. So just keep that in mind. I like using my KitchenAid um, lined up with the dough attachment. We will talk ingredients now. Flour. This recipe calls for three cups of all-purpose flour. Um, I'll have the recipe linked down below like I always do. I don't like using all-purpose flour in my bread recipes. I don't. I like using bread flour. I use King Arthur for all of my flours, but bread flour just tastes better, chews better. I just like it more. Will it affect this recipe? I don't know. But I've done it with every other recipe that calls for all-purpose. I do bread flour and I haven't had a problem, so we're gonna just try it. <laughs> then you need one and three-fourths, nope, 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 one and one-third cup of warm water. You need one packet of instant yeast to make it rise. You need about three cloves of garlic, finely chopped up. Obviously optional, but this is flavored this way for a reason. 
And then in here, I've mixed all three of these ingredients. It's two sprigs of rosemary, obviously plucked off the stem and chopped up, two teaspoons of salt, I used sea salt, and one and a half teaspoons of sugar. I then mixed them all together and I kind of mashed the sugar and salt into the rosemary to kind of pull out some of those oils and really fragrance the whole amalgamation here of goodness. And uh, I wish I had smell vision for you. It's gonna be fantastic. So onward we go. We will be making some bread in three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is how it's gonna go. We are gonna toss all of these ingredients into the mixing bowl, mix it around until it's a shaggy hot mess, and that's a direct quote from the recipe. <laughs> Cover it and let it proof. After it's proofed the first time, we're gonna pull it out, we're gonna stretch it out, knead it a little bit, flop it into a ball shape, flip it over and cover it and let it rise a little bit longer for a second proof. Then it will go into the Dutch oven, into the oven and bake. I'll get more into description about the baking process when we get there. <laughs> so let's do that. First thing I want to address in bread making, and I might have mentioned this in my focaccia video, but I'm not sure, is that you want to use warm water, but you don't want it to be so hot that it kills the yeast germ. That would just defeat the whole purpose. So I have warm water here, but I like to be safe and check the temperature of it no matter what to make sure I'm not about to scorch my yeast because that would be a bummer, a big, big bummer. We're looking at about 106. I believe 110 is max. The water should be lukewarm or 105 degrees Fahrenheit for what it's worth. Just a little over 105, it's 106. It'll lose some temperature as it gets into my cold thing actually now that I think about it. So let's do that. Let's pour it into the cold KitchenAid bowl. Beautiful. <laughs> we will add the yeast in next. That is one packet of instant yeast. Then we're gonna add our garlic. It literally says add all the ingredients and then mix, so don't mind if I do. <laughs> Let's add our salt, sugar, and rosemary. Now, the reason why you want sugar in this recipe, because I'm sure if you're not familiar with baking bread, you might be wondering why the heck are you adding sugar to a savory recipe, but the yeast needs some form of sugar in order to activate and grow. It eats the sugar and burps out its beautiful little gases, and that's what makes the pockets of air in your bread. Now you know. <laughs> Let's add our flour. Okay, we're gonna drop the lid down. Again, this is fitted with my dough hook attachment. I'm gonna do an on and off, on and off motion to slowly get the flour and water incorporated so I don't make a mess. If you've watched any of my videos, I probably will make a mess anyway because that's just how it goes, obviously. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Oh, I guess with a dough hook, it doesn't fly all over the place like a paddle attachment does. We're safe, we're all right. I love bread. So I'm gonna let this just whirl away for just a minute or so until it's nice and incorporated. The recipe says that this should be a sticky, shaggy, hot mess, and it's supposed to be that way. That's my kind of recipe. So this is what we're working with here. It's sticking to the walls, but it's sticking together. It's shaggy and wet. I'd say that's probably good. We're gonna get some good gluten bonds in there with the bread flour. All right, let's turn this off. Nice and stretchy, nice and sticky. 
Okay, so now we are going to take the bowl off. I'm gonna just scrape down the sides to ensure that everyone is together and harmonious. It's a little hard because it is indeed very sticky. It doesn't say to do this in the recipe. This is just what I'm familiar with. If you're interested in any of my bread making escapades, follow my Instagram, Rachel's Baking Corner, and I will post some of my different breads that I've made. I've done focaccia, which there's a video on my channel if you're interested in that. That's a really easy recipe and it is killer. Um, I've done regular white sandwich bread. My personal favorite is honey oat with some fresh oats on top. Uh, I've done black sesame seed swirl, which was kind of a fail, but it tasted great. <laughs> Hi. I've done Hokkaido milk bread, which was really cool because when you squish it, it poofs right back up. I just, I love bread. Anyway, we're gonna get this covered and we are gonna let this sucker proof. The warm water, the yeast, the sugar, they're all gonna just have a party and hang out and get to know each other and dance a little bit. And then they're gonna get a little drunk and then they're gonna burp and then they're gonna make all these beautiful air bubbles and pockets and just fragrant, delicious tasting oxygen. And it's gonna poof up, probably not oxygen, but that's okay. It's gonna poof up and usually you wanna look for doubled in size. A little tip and trick that I've learned, take a picture of your batter or dough, I should say, right now in the bowl. And then when you check on it later, you can compare to what you started with to what you have now and see if it has doubled in size or not. If you live in a colder climate, you may want to use the proofing setting on your oven or find a warm little nook, cover it up and just leave it alone. This says for about 60 minutes. So I'm going to cover this up with some saran wrap and stick it into my pantry, which gets pretty warm. And we will reconvene in a moment here with some proofed dough, doubled in size or 60 minutes, whatever happens. <laughs> So it deflated a little bit when I moved it, but this is doubled in size. This looks fantastic. It smells good. It's more than halfway up the bowl. <laughs> so now we can work with it. We are back. We have some shaggy dough going on here. So let's get to working with it. I do have a silicone or like rubber bowl bench scraper. This helps me get it out and it also keeps my hands from getting super messy. I've got some flour to work with here. We're gonna just dust flour. Okay, I'm gonna put my thing in some flour. It's not gonna do a whole lot because it is silicone and we're gonna just scrape it out. So this is obviously gonna deflate it and take some of the air out, but that's okay. It's gonna proof a little bit more. Okay. Gonna add some flour to the top to make it workable. Okay, and we're gonna flatten it out a bit. Get some good flour on our hands too. Oh yeah, see it's making a mess, but that's okay. Flour is easy to fix. All right, and I'm gonna just pull all the edges in. Oh, it's sticking really good. That's okay. Oh, my flour didn't do anything. Oh, it's so it's a little more, more moist than I'm used to. Put some flour down. Flop it over onto that. See, it comes together eventually. I'm gonna put a good amount of flour down. We're gonna flip it over. Try to make it into a nice ball. There we go. Make sure the surrounding area has flour too because it might puff out as much as it will go up. And I'm gonna just gently cover it with a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick. Doesn't look like much yet, but just you wait. Yeah, a nice little ball here. <laughs> we are gonna cover this with a towel and let it proof again for another 20 minutes. Basically until the Dutch oven has had time to preheat in the oven. 
So here we are. Our bread has been sitting for maybe like 30 minutes. Um, it took me a minute to get my oven preheated and ready to go, but it's perfect. It's poofed up great. Got a nice little jiggle to it. Let me show you a close up real quick. Here is our ball, nice and poofed up. You can see the little flecks of rosemary in there. Let's do this. So I sort of regret cutting as much of this parchment as I did, because you usually want something to be able to lift this up and move it around, but it's not a big deal. So what we're gonna do now is we are just going to put a little bit of olive oil and salt on it, and then get it in our Dutch oven and get going, All right? Okay, I'm just gonna use my hands. Gently. This way the salt will stick to it and it'll make a nice crust. Good, okay. Get my salt. And just sprinkle salt on top of it. Now I have a lane. You can use a sharp knife, but this is made specifically for cutting bread. We're gonna use this in just a second once we get it in the Dutch oven, which my Dutch oven is in the oven preheating right now, so I'm gonna pull it out and we will get this going, okay? Okay. Okay, let's get our Dutch oven out of the oven. I did spray it with some oil before I put it in there, just so you know. I think you can tell by the steam that that's ready to go. You have to be very careful because you're working with a very hot piece of equipment here. So you kind of have to just do this in one fell swoop. I'm gonna pick this up. Ooh, here I have an idea. I'm gonna slide it onto another piece of parchment. Now we have some more parchment to work with without really stressing the dough out. Okay. I'm gonna pick this up and just pray. Just plop it in there. Probably could have done it a little gentler, but I'm scared. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna use my lame and I'm just gonna do an X, okay? Actually, I'm gonna just do one line across because it's, it's really interrupting the dough. Let's get the lid on. I did not preheat my lid. Let's just get that in there. And let's get this back in the oven. Whew, okay. That is gonna bake for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, then we'll take the lid off and let it bake for another 10 to 15 minutes until it's golden brown and delicious. It's worth it, I promise. And we're back and we have bread. So first things first, I'm not obsessed with how tall it didn't get. I, my last loaf really poofed up and, and busted out and you could really see the score. So this isn't my favorite loaf in the whole world. Um, I'm not hating on this recipe, but the other recipe I used for Dutch oven bread was a little bit more manageable and poofed up really, really well. So, you know, Win some, you lose some, you try. But um, either way, it smells divine. That rosemary and garlic is just exploding out of that bread. You can smell it so well. And I added some salt to the top, so it's gonna have that nice salty bite to it. I'm really excited to try this. Um, let's get a quick close up. Here's our loaf. Not as tall as I wanted it to be. It'll make for a beautiful dinner bread, but I wouldn't use it as a sandwich bread. 
the score really isn't all that noticeable. It was very moist, the dough had a lot, a lot of high hydration percentage. I don't know if that's how you'd say it, but it's got a nice crust. And it sounds hollow, so I think we're good. Let's try it. So I'm going to cut down the middle to see how the crumb turned out. So let's do that. It's still pretty hot. You're supposed to wait for it to cool, but I'm not, I'm not patient enough to. Okay, ready? <laughs> it looks beautiful. Let's cut a slice and see how this turned out. Nice and crusty. It cuts easier when it's cool, for what it's worth. The bottom got a really good crust, so it's kind of hard to cut through right now. I gotta get some butter, hold on. Okay. Let's get some butter on this. It's nice and hot. Got garlic, rosemary, sea salt. Let's see. I don't have to tell you anything. I think you can just tell. It's so good. That garlic is so strong. <sighs> the crumb is perfect. It's crusty on the outside, but it's nice and soft on the inside. See, it just springs right back up. Mmm. I'm making a mess. See, this is why I love baking bread. It didn't turn out the way I exactly wanted it to, but it doesn't matter. Don't matter. Still tastes so good. That Dutch oven just has such a way of crusting the outside while leaving it pillowy soft on the inside. Mmm. I am going to devour this whole thing without a problem. And this isn't going to work with me tomorrow. This is staying here. This is mine. <laughs> I'll share with my boyfriend, I suppose, but that's it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. Um, let me know what bread recipes you like the most or what other methods you like to cook your bread. If you like sourdough, I've yet to try that. Um, leave a comment down below for me. Subscribe, like this video, and I will see you very soon in my next one. Thank you, take care, I love you, goodbye.